Hello and welcome to the Take On Editing tutorial. With this quick guide, we're going to piece together a fairly simple scenario, along the way covering the basics of the editor and hopefully demonstrating a couple of new features too. What you're seeing now is just a little cinematic of the scenario itself. By the time we're done, we should have a fully playable scenario, all set for you to tinker around with, customise and break horribly. If you just want to play the mission, it's downloadable from the project's website, with all the details in the description. You can also find a full, step-by-step -step written guide too. Well, wasn't that just lovely? All right, so let's jump straight in. And here's one I made earlier. What you can see here is the editor with Seattle loaded. This nonsense littering the screen is the mission itself. And over the next few minutes, we're gonna build it. Let's clear it away now by starting a new one. And the first thing I'll do is save our new scenario. Enter a suitable name and click okay. So, this scenario is now saved to your user profile. This is created by default in your documents, but like me, you may have created a new profile. Let's quickly jump out of the game and I'll find it. My documents, take on helicopters of the profiles, never mind the pawn, there's my profile, missions, and there it is. Okay, back to the game. The first thing we'll do is create the heliport. To do that, we select modules and double click on the map to place it. This is a location you'll be familiar with from the career mode, challenges, tutorials, etc. Click OK to add it. When the mission loads, this spawns the heliport composition and does a few other more snazzy things, which aren't really important right now, but suffice to say, they make your life a little simpler. Next, we'll create our player. Select the units icon and double click near the heliport to open the insert unit interface. We choose our player by setting side, civilian, faction, story, class, people, and unit, Tom Larkin, helicopter pilot. In the variable name field, enter hsim player. Basically, this will assign an identity to the unit, which, again, while useful for a number of things, isn't essential to learn about right now. Click OK to place. Next, we'll add a helicopter. Again, with unit selected, double click to place. I'll pick an empty heavy helicopter, setting side, empty, class, helicopters heavy, and unit, Larkin Aviation. We needn't be too precise about where to place it, as the heliport module will set up the positions for us. Next, we need to link up the chopper with the player and the heliport. To do that, we select the synchronize icon. Click and hold on where we place the heliport module, drag your cursor to the helicopter, and release. So, here we've connected up the game's logic, telling the heliport that this is the default helicopter that we want the player to fly. Next we'll place a ship, scroll across to somewhere in Elliot Bay, select the unit icon and double click. We'll add an empty ship, selecting side, empty, class, ships, and unit, cargo ship, empty, blue, or whatever colour. We can change the orientation of the ship by clicking and holding the left mouse button on it, holding the shift key and moving the mouse around. Now is a good time to preview the mission, so I'll save and click Preview. We start at the heliport in our heavy helicopter, and we can see a ship placed a little bit further out in Puget Sound. If we're lucky, we'll spot ambient boats, air traffic, maybe the odd whale, which is created automatically by the heliport module. OK, diving back into the editor, next we'll place a container crate for us to sling load. With the unit icon still selected, double click nearby the ship. Place a crate by setting side, empty, class, objects, military, and unit, container in net. Click OK. Let's zoom in the view and move the object, clicking, holding, and dragging it, so it's positioned directly above the empty ship. OK, something you'll enjoy while getting to know the editor, we're going to show you something like a, a dirty hack. To make the container object sit on the deck, we're going to want to raise the object by around 2 meters. Double click on the crate and open the edit unit interface. In the initialization field, type this, set pause, open bracket, position this, select 0, comma, 
position this, select one comma, two, and close bracket, and click OK. What we're doing here is using a script command to set the position of the object relative to where we placed it by first getting the coordinates and then adding two to the z-axis of the object in 3D space. Next we'll place a trigger, first by selecting the trigger icon, then by double clicking somewhere nearby the ship and cargo. We want to enlarge the detection area of the trigger by setting axis A to 100, axis B to 100 as well. So now we have a slightly larger circle. To get the trigger to fire, we need to link the trigger with the player using the groups tool. Select the group icon, click and hold the trigger, drag your cursor above the player and release. This thin highlighted line shows that the trigger is now grouped with the unit. Now we need to make something interesting happen when we activate the trigger, like getting the wind to pick up when we're on approach. Double click on the trigger to open the edit trigger interface. In the on act field, enter set wind, open bracket, 10 comma, 10 comma, true, close bracket, and click OK. So, what we've done here is to tell the trigger to fire a scripting command that forces the wind to blow, which will make picking up the cargo a little bit more difficult. Next, we need to actually give the player something to do. Select a waypoint icon, and then click on the player unit, Tom Larkin. Scroll back over to the container in net object, double click on it to select, and open the insert waypoint interface. Select scripted helicopters in the category selection box, and attach sling load in the type selection box. We'll enter 6 in the completion radius field, and 5 in the arguments field, and click OK. Here we're changing some of the basic conditions of a sling load task, how close we need to be, how long we're going to have to hold a steady hover above the target. But these are explained in better detail on the community wiki. Next, with the waypoint icon still selected, scroll back to the heliport, find an open patch of ground, and double click. Select scripted helicopters in the category selection box, detach sling load in the type, and click OK. So, we've told the player that after he's picked up the sling load, he should proceed to dump it down over here. Let's place our final waypoint, and find a simple way to trigger the end of the mission. With the waypoint icon still selected, double click near the heliport landing area. Again, select scripted helicopters in the category selection box and pick land in the selection type box. To trigger the end of the mission, we'll type a script in the on act field. End mission, open quote, default, end quote. There are different types of ending and more advanced ways to trigger it, but today we're only interested in trying to keep things simple. To finish up the mission, and give an excuse to show the markers tool, we'll add some prompts, which are visible in the map. Select the markers icon, and double click near the ship to open the insert marker interface. Enter a name, HSIM pickup, and text, pickup. This text field is visible in the game via the map. Repeat the process and adding another marker at the drop off point, and we're almost done here. We can add a mission description and edit some basic parameters of the mission time of day, weather, that sort of thing. Double click on the time and date to open the Intel interface. Okay, all that's left to do is save and now test our mission. Well, that's it for this guide. I hope you found it informative and are inspired to take on the challenge of making your own monstrous creations in Take On Helicopters. Bye for now.